Legend of War here, and today we've got a Rating Your Doomstack video covering a Bastilladon Ark of Sotek Doomstack. So we've got 14 Bastilladon Ark of Soteks, several heroes, and Tehenowin. We're in the Ghost of Pahwax faction, which I guess would it would have been better to be in the Cult of Sotek for the extra physical resistance. That's fine. Our army is just a little bit damaged, but that's fine. It should still be an appropriate test. And we're going up against like two and a half full armies of dwarfs, including Thorak Ironbrow. Order Resolve says it's going to be close to feet. We could easily Lightning Strike it, but we're here to test it out. So my initial concerns with this army is that um, I've never really been a huge fan of the Bastilladon Ark of Sotek. I know that it's good, right? But the reason why I'm not a huge fan of it is just because there's better units, in my opinion. But apparently, based on this guy's email, is that this ability here got a buff over the update, and apparently it does more damage or something. I'm not sure, because I haven't used it yet. Because um, I usually just go straight to um, Stegadons. And uh, it's good that we've got a healer now, so we don't have to rely on just having a life slan. But uh, yeah, we'll just jump in here and see how they go. I kind of feel that the heroes are still going to be the uh, the big winners of this army, and that the Bastilladons, I, I just don't know how much damage they're actually going to dish out. So these abilities that we pop down, they don't stack. So we can't just pop them all down at once unless we spread ourselves out. And since we're definitely better off going into, like, a blob, um, we need to probably just use, like, maybe some of them at a time. So what I might do is set them up in smaller groups so that I can kind of keep track of which one's abilities we've used up. So we'll pop them down three, two or three of them at a time. And uh, we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I don't... I'm not a huge fan of, like, ability-heavy Doomstacks. They are difficult to use, especially because the person who made them has probably, like, been using it for ages, and they get to learn how how to use it properly, right? And then I get one battle, and I've got to, I've got to fucking master it on the first try, and it's painful, because I, I, I didn't build this army. So I don't know what abilities they've got. I don't know how he's leveled it up. Um, especially with the heroes. So, we'll see how we go. Uh, but yeah, I think the best doom stacks that are sent in are ones that I can like pick up immediately and know immediately what needs to be done. Because ease of use is strength, right? Uh, the 10 out of 10 doom stacks are always like just the easiest armies to use. They just don't require any thought. Just, oh, okay, this is all you gotta do? Find it easy. Um, if it, well, let's just jump in and see where we go. Alright, so this one here... Uh, Skink Chief. Since we're primarily focused on melee, like, this is a missile unit, but it probably would be better to come in here and help disrupt as many of the, um, the, uh, the Thunderers as possible, because they're probably going to be the biggest threat. Normally I would, like, sit back and relax and just shoot them for a bit, but we've only got one Stegadon. They have, no, excuse me, they, they have the range advantage, so I don't think that's a good idea. Alright, I'm just going to charge right in, and we'll see how we go. Um, I don't understand the point of the Soros Scar Veteran in this army. Soros Scar Veterans are really good, but it doesn't buff the army at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. Alright, let's start with a few heals while we're getting organized. I feel like these three here are going to do all the serious damage. So save this for when they get clumped up, and we just want to charge right in here. He's given me instructions on how to deal with this, and this is exactly how he's told me to do it. Okay, so I'm just following instructions, because uh, it's not my army. Alright, you can shoot them just a little bit. You get around their back. Yeah, I don't like how slow Bastilladons are, but luckily they're still getting organized. Okay, we've also got this as well, which I will use. Cool, keep the Slayers busy, you get the Thunderers, come in there we go, 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 go. Alright, where are you? Let's get a nice big one of those in here. Okay, should we, hang on, we're not quite in there yet, just wait a little bit longer, push in just a bit harder. Okay, ready, first load, go down.
Okay, let's also use a Curse of the Midnight Wind to slow them down. What I really don't like about the uh, update in terms of um, some of the magic changes is that you have to wait until they finish casting before you can cast anything else. It means you have to be slower now. Okay, let's use number two. Number three, go. Going pretty crazy. Another Curse of the Midnight Wind. Gotta slow him down. Nobody's in any serious danger just yet, which is good. I'm gonna get some heals up in here. Okay, number four, go. Number five, uh, number one's almost ready to go again. Okay, number five, go. It's doing pretty well. It's doing pretty well. I think the control groups are really essential here. I don't usually use control groups, but forcing me to use control groups will, uh, of course, minus you one point. I'm just kidding. Just have to move out of my comfort zone a little bit. Okay, number two. You're not ready yet. This way I don't need to keep track of exactly where they are. I'll just pop it down. Okay, another one of these. Any, like, stragglers, missile units over here, let's get them to deal with. Alright, things are definitely calming down now. The uh, bounce fireball spells totally useless here. Don't even don't even bother with it. Completely fucking useless. All right, you ready? Yep. Down more of this. Yep. Yeah, don't let these guys shoot. Okay, this guy's pretty badly damaged, yeah, because of them. Okay, ready to do that again. And fuck it, let's just do this a bit more, because we're kind of spread out now anyway. And there's the army losses. Suppose you could even go even more efficient and put them into groups of two. That way you could have used um, seven or eight control groups, and um, it would have required a little bit more micro, but there was some time there where I wasn't really doing much. And then just heal after the battle. So don't need, don't need to send a save file back. We don't need to bother with that. Still Pyrrhic victory. Probably because of how much damage we took. And we need to have a look at how much damage the actual Bastilladons did. It seems like it varied a fair bit. Probably largely due to where the actual Ark of Soteric ability popped down. Funnily enough, this guy here actually got the most kills. And that was primarily just because of that comment of Cassandora. So, let's have a look at actual damage value. Oh my god, 50,000. Jeez. 20,000 on that. Yep. I mean, it did well. It did well, for sure. Um, I'd say it's a good doomsday. A lot of effort needs to go into it. It's definitely not 10 out of 10. Um, also, went up against an enemy that, I guess, it, it, it was good against it. And also, um... They didn't get a chance to get organized. This was a situation where they were very easily blobbed up. Um, 
So all of these things need to be taken into consideration. Um, it is good. It's definitely a doom stack. What? What? Like uh, tier are Bastilodons? Let me just have a look. So the Ark of Sotek is a tier two. Okay. So you can get them very easily. Right, it seems like they've lowered the the rank of the um of the Bastille guns. They didn't they used to have it only at tier two. Uh, sorry, they didn't have the tier two. They would go straight to tier three, four, five. I haven't paid too much attention to the changes of Lizardmen, even though I did a Lizardmen campaign. I, I don't think I got any of these units in in my campaign. So it seems like they lowered the rank of the Bastillodons. Well, that certainly makes them easier to get. Man, for a tier two unit, that performed pretty well. Yeah. Okay, it was definitely an ideal situation, but for a tier 2 Doomstack, how's their upkeep cost? 248. Hang on, let me just compare again. 250 compared to 388. It's not bad. Okay. There's not too many heroes involved in that. Did you trait farm? Yep. That's fine. Just curious. Cool. Um, I don't think that the Sora Scar veteran was needed in the army. You'd be better off with another wizard, or another oracle, or even another Bastilodon. Just because it just adds another unit type to the army. I definitely like Sora Scar veterans, but you should like. Maybe make an army full of Sora Scar veterans or something like that. I just don't feel like this guy is adding anything to the army. Um, I get that the Skink Chief is there for casualty replenishment rates, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, my I think my biggest concern with this is just just take out the um, the Sora Scar veteran. But these guys here, they did a good job. Uh, decent amount of damage. If we had stayed and healed, um, we could have probably gotten a close victory instead of a, a Pyrrhic one. None of them died, so that's good. Um, but again, was an ideal situation for them. Put them in an unideal situation, so going up against a lot of single entities on monsters, um, I don't think this will do very well at all. Also, I think that if the dwarves had been allowed to get set up and spread it out, uh, that would have been very difficult to deal with because, I mean, the main reason we did so much damage to them is because they were clumped up together, we popped down the area of effect stuff and it just killed them all. So that has to be taken into consideration. All right, in terms of a rating, I'm leaning towards giving it an 8.5. I think that's a solid score, right? Because I feel like there's so many situations where this will just fall flat and just straight up die. They're slower than Stegodons. They're cheaper than Stegodons, so that's definitely good. Um, it's more micro-intensive, but, you know, setting up the control group certainly makes it easier with that. Um... I don't agree with the Sora Scar veteran. I just don't think he's adding anything important to the army. Just take him out, put something else in, um, make it a little bit easier to micro. If, if, if just like I didn't, I didn't use these abilities at all in that battle because it just wasn't important. So he had the lowest impact. Uh, the wizards were good. Tehenawin was good. Um, their ability to just use that solar beam stuff—that's so good. I should probably learn what this bloody calls. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it's a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think he set up an ideal situation for it. Which, it did really well, but I, I think there's going to be a lot of situations where if you rely too heavily on this Doom stack, they will fail you every now and again. But it is pretty good for its price, so I think 8.5 is a pretty good score. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this Doom stack. I'm curious because um, it impressed me because I have such a low score, a low opinion of Bastilodons. Um, but he clearly put a lot of effort into it as well. Definitely think it would be better in the Cult of Sotek, but it did do a good job. Gotta give it credit where credit's due. 8.5 is a good score, I'll leave it at that. Anyway, that's the end of this one, appreciate you guys. Leave a comment below letting me know what you think about this Doomstack, whether you agree or disagree with the rating, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.